All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, what is the episode about? What is this called? Uh, <laughs> so in this episode, we're going to be building a Dyneema loop. With the chafe material. With the chafe material. Woven in. Over the top of the load-bearing 12-strand Dyneema. Okay. I've done continuous loops for highlining, so I'm familiar kind of with that. But I, this is, I'm new to the chafe world. <laughs> but this chafe material, in case you don't know what it is, it's not 12 braided Dyneema. It is Dyneema, but it's like snake skin. So if you make it bigger on the inside, then it's what, not gonna hold the load. That, Correct. It's like a, a sheath for a rope has a sheath and a core. Um, very, very, very much like. It, it, the, it the, is literally the Dyneema version. The same thing. Yeah. Yes. So we're gonna put probably three passes of three mil Dyneema. Oh, that's why it's so strong. Inside. You're literally making an industrial sling. Yes. And then you can customize it to whatever length you want. You can make it long enough that you can girth hitch it onto something. That's going to be strong. Yes. Okay. This, we just tested in a video for soft shackles. We pulled straight eye to eye so we could compare it to the actual soft shackle, which proved to be like, what, 20... One twenty-two. Soft track was twenty-eight with a button knot. With a button knot, it was even more. And this is um, eighth inch, uh, so freedom units. So three point three millimeters. Yeah, give or take. Um, not bad for an American, right? So straight. If straight was twelve, a loop would be twenty. Not quite double. You're gonna do three, three x. We might have to put the two to one on our hydraulic <laughs> just to break this. But you build all that inside of the chafe material and then cover and the chafe material sort of gets tucked inside itself and stitched together so it's a nice it's a loop where you can barely even see where the join is wow that's so innovative <laughs> <laughs> so let's see here uh, an industrial sling or a span set is a lot of little fibers wrapped a lot probably over a hundred times if not a thousand it's a lot and I can't even find where is the seam on this guy there it is. So uh, this is chafe material over. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, over a load wow. bearing. I've actually Same. never seen this, so I'm very excited. Um, so what we're going to start with is him showing us how to make it, and then afterwards we're going to break it. Hi, my name is David. I'm a professional sailor, and today we are going to be building a chafe covered Dyneema loop. Sizing the loop right now, it's going to be about that long. I'm just going to cut the chafe cover a little bit long. It has a tagline in it that we don't need. A bent over wire to help pull some Dyneema through the Dyneema chafe cover. Anything special about that wire? No. Okay, just a wire. Just a wire. Bend the ends. So you don't go through. So, yeah. yeah, it'll slide off the end if you're not careful. We have chafe material on some of the soft shackles you can buy for high lines. Oh, so you go through it. Punch You don't through. go to the end. So that's sort of one pass you can see the the yeah. blue gets joined together and it starts to form the the loop you can use a fit instead of the uh the wire as well mm, that's true yeah you just you're just, pushing it through instead of pulling it through that way yeah personal personal preference so i'm making sure I'm straight coming out in exactly the same spot. Oh, the same spot. Exactly the same spot, otherwise you end up with gotcha. some unhappiness later. Gotcha. Pulling that through, so now we have sort of two passes. Red. And we're going to do one more. You can get thinner Dyneema and do more passes or fatter Dyneema and fewer passes. Say you need a loop that breaks at 10,000 pounds. Do a little bit of math and that's one thing I want to learn today is 
has my math been correct? So you, you, you can size the loop in strength um, accordingly based on the number of passes and the diameter of the Dyneema, yeah, to get your desired strength. Do you know what size sheath this is or what it's called? It's eight to 10 mil Dyneema chafe cover. And that's outside diameter that they're basing that on? Or? It is the outside diameter if you were to put so if you were to put a single piece of six mil Dyneema inside, okay. it would be probably around eight mils outside diameter. And if you were to put an eight mil uh, of Dyneema inside the white chafe cover, it would be nine or 10 mil diameter. Okay. And it comes in different sizes, so you can make it a smaller range, a middle range, and a big range often. So, you know, there's four to six or four to eight mil, yeah. eight to 10, and then a 10 to... 14 mils. So and right three, now three we're inch. looking at the 8 to 10 and you're putting um, eighth inch. Yeah, three passes. 3.3 3 mil yeah. inside of it. All right, so we have our three passes in. So it'll be three passes. These guys are going to end up spliced together, Okay. Um, which we will show. And then the white cover will get pulled over all of the blue and uh, stitched together. If you have to build it a perfect length, you should be like Sharpie marking to make sure everything yeah. is repeatable and you, you know you measure everything out but i'm yeah it's i'm just, not doing that yeah we're not <laughs> <laughs> so can you guess how long it's going to be like can you make it precision yeah it'll it'll take it takes a few repetitions of building something okay and then once you build it it stretches and sets in a little bit as well. So you have to yeah. know how many wraps you have and display. So that's a trial and error. And this, yeah, it takes some experience. To, okay. But you can end up building them like really quite precise. Gotcha. So we're going to have to taper both of these guys to make sure we have maximum strength. Ah, so you taper way back. Oh, yeah. So I'm pulling strands out. So you pull two strands out. In opposite directions which helps maintain the braid. If you pull all the strands out in one direction, yeah, because it, 12... It'll undo itself. 12 strands, six are going that way, six are going that way. Yeah. So if you pull six out this way, you don't have a braid anymore. <laughs> That's how I've always done it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you just pull them all out, then cut. Yeah. And having a sharp pair of scissors, let me go with these, is quite nice. Because uh, Dyneema will dull a knife if you're cutting with a knife. Even if it is sharp, it will become dull. And S it'll... Scissors don't become dull? Scissor, uh, these are special Kevlar cutting scissors. Oh. That oh. don't dull as... They're, they're serrated on the other side. Or they're both serrated. Little tiny serrations. Wow. Uh, so God. Sure. Stay sharp. I know longer. what I'm going to be getting next. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same distance taper... On this guy, so I'm going to taper both of them. All right, so I'm going to do a two-step berry here to help make my life easier. I've already pre-tapered both sides. I'm going to pull through about two inches. What are your homemade span sets called again? Uh, loops. Just Dyneema loops. Wow, you think these would have a fancier name. So I'm burying bits that don't have a taper. I'll be able to show you in one second. So pull that together. So that looks sort of like a normal butt splice. The taper starts here and the rest of it is gonna get tapered more. I'm gonna stitch this middle join together so it doesn't come out. Okay. Then finish tapering or bury and finish tapering um, both of these from there. So you, they're just inside of each other. They're just inside of each other right there. And we're going to do a little baseball stitch. Oh, this is actual whipping twine. Yep. Dyneema. Dyneema. It's probably... Dyneema on Dyneema on Dyneema. You got it. Wow. <laughs> so I'm just I thought I was into Dyneema. Tying a knot at the end of... Uh, just an overhand. Just an overhand knot. Just melt the tails of this knot to make sure it doesn't come out. Gotcha. So it's a loop of Dyneema Whipping Twine. Okay. And... And it's okay if it just goes through whatever part of it? Yeah, this is not 
really structural. It's just keeping the splice uh, together. Keeping yeah, the, it's the, it's the finger trapping. When it. it's unloaded, it can work itself out. When ah. it's under load, it all crunches on itself and takes the, takes the load. But when you're not using, when you're not loading the loop, it can wiggle and sort of walk itself out over time. So this is it's, so, yeah, sort of like it, Loctite on a fastener, if yeah, if that's an applicable. Um, yeah, it's not metaphor. for the load; it's for the jiggling. I'll finish this by. Coming out the same hole I went in, going under with the needle, and if I wrap like this, it ends up tying a half hitch yeah. around that guy. And then that makes me happy. I you go straight back down that hole and along the rope and out. And when you pull, that half hitch you tied gets sucked into the rope and now the compression of the blue dyneema is going to hold that knot i just tied in place wow and i'm learning a ton snip that and then we're gonna bury the tails this is going to go straight back in, so I need to, just like I did before, make sure the wire is coming out in, in exactly the same spot that this rope is coming out. Okay. Because you want it to be completely inside. Really? So I'm gonna suck that in. And because I pre-tapered four of the 12 strands, Yeah it's easier to do this yeah, with the that, wire. It, yeah. It's already a smaller diameter. And then that sucks completely in, so you can't see where that was Okay, out. so you saw the brummel or anything. It's it's just a pure splice. It's a, like a, a butt splice, I'll, I'll call it. The two ends of the rope set right up against each other. So why don't you just go all the way through, pull it tight, pull the two tails, splice it, and then milk it? Um, it's easier to, if you have to be very precise with your lengths, to do this little berry and then you stitch this in place so it can't come apart yeah. while you're doing the rest of the berry and the taper. You've already nailed your length okay. at that point in time. Okay. And remember, for anybody who's not familiar with this, when you put this rope inside of here, it makes this part smaller. So everything you do to this changes the, the distance. Yeah. If you don't taper, the sudden change in diameter is going to weaken that spot. But I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got three wraps, at what point does it not matter anymore? It's probably super good enough. Uh, I'm wondering. <laughs> of course, do things according to the manufacturer's specifications. Oh, wow. Look at you. That was nailed it. That sucked all the way in. Yep. And repeat the process on the other side. So now the load bearing part is done. We'll sort of milk it back around so all three sort of get equalized. So yeah, all all the same length. That right there looks strong. So what do you got there? Uh, we call it millionaire's tape because uh, it's so expensive. But it's a uh, Teflon tape, like low friction tape. That is <laughs> millionaire's tape. A little bit slippery and pretty good. Uh, so okay, I'm taping that to the cover or the. The core, yeah. So that I can then milk. Oh, so that stays on it. So it just it stays in there. Oh. And then you just use millionaire tape. Yeah. Solves all your problems. <laughs> God. So then we're going to bury this cover into just the other p piece of the cover in the same way we buried the core. That sounds hard. So we're gonna taper it and then pull it through with the wire. I'm excited to see this. I have no idea how you're gonna do that. Using the point to grab 
the little strands. What is that tool called that you're using? Uh, it's also called a fid. Okay, that that's a fid. That, yeah, it's a different type of fid from there's there's three or four different types of fids. Okay. I don't know which type this is actually called. Okay. Same thing as before. I'm pulling in pairs of two opposite directions in the same point on the rope. Just working my way up. And this doesn't need to be super tapered for load bearing stuff, but it leaves sort of an ugly bump in the finished product if you don't taper it. Okay, so after you unweave it, basically. Yep. Cutting, and I've cut a third of them out, progressing towards the end. Going inside of just the cover, I'm trying not to hit any of the, uh, the individual strands inside, and you can sort of see the wire, the bump right there. Yeah, I can see how you can be able to tell. Slide along. So can you buy these things, or does everyone make their own? You can buy some of these, yeah. They're, uh, Harkin is one company that makes makes them they're not cheap so if you can i just know like after i watch a video like this i usually just want to go buy one instead of making my own <laughs> i'm just gonna pull oh you literally pulled a whole I'm potato pull... through oh yeah pulling that oh. thing through and then i have to walk that guy around and that keeps getting <clears throat> sucked into it so then that's what the join gotcha. looks like. And I'm just going to trim that difference. That it guy. Already tapered. So. And it's going to leave, because I didn't taper more, it's going to leave just a tiny little bump right there. But, but it's, it's, not, it's visual only. And then I'm going to do a baseball stitch all the way around this join. Okay. You don't want to stitch through yeah. because the three yeah. loops are going to move and equalize. You need them to be free floating. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And you said that people can, they have different chafe covers for color coding or how do they do it? Uh, well, you can build white and black Dyneema and then there are coatings that can go on top. So the chafe cover comes in white or black and if you get a white one, you can then paint this plasticky coating over the top of it that improves UV chafe and helps you identify it. So you can build them. You so, can I you color know. coat them to the strength, or you can color coat them to applications to, to look cool. Gotcha. Because there's different things you might need them for in different parts of the boats. Exactly. So I'm trying to catch both sides of the cover here without catching the core. So I'm doing this. Gotcha. Stitch that looks like that, and this brown thing is just it, it is the a burnt the end. burnt end of the knot. It's like a stopper knot. Gotcha. Oh, and you're just gonna go all the way around, all the way around, and I, the cover doesn't see any of the load. Yeah. So again, this is, you would have to stretch it back to original length. Exactly. So this is just keeping the cover in position. <laughs> yeah, super bummer. I'm I'm excited to break this. Yeah, I think it's gonna make a loud pop. All right. So you got one all the way around, and how'd you finish it? So this is the join, and it's the two covers where they're joined. It's stitched through one and all the way around the circumference. And then you of just it. stop, or do you and then do um, tie off? Sit the same way I tied off the in the blue dynamo. I sort of tie a half hitch and bury the bury, it. bury the tail through it. That, how strong do you think that is? 12,000 pounds. Do you even need it that strong? It depends, sometimes. I feel like your boat would break first. Let's go test it. <laughs> okay, we're all set. We're ready to pull this. But what was your thought about splicing? Um, one of the reasons that you have to do multiple passes of smaller Dyneema inside rather than one, say, seven mil loop is the berry has to be a certain length and the bigger the diameter, the longer the berry needs to be to have a full strength splice. So you, if you were to build one loop out of seven mil Dyneema, it would need to be longer in length than this. Just and to get your splice. Just to get the two ends tapered together properly to get uh, a maximum strength. Yeah, but um, yeah, this that makes sense. Smaller diameter, you can get 
small loops like this. Way less strong than I thought. I am blown away. I think we've blown your mind all three episodes. <laughs> we, and this is hot. Wow, that looks like it's all melted together. Uh, that's probably why it broke so low, is because it, it's literally melted to a point. Is that blue from the, yours or from my soft shot? The blue is the, the load-bearing part inside that melted. Or oh. the, it, so I think it got so hot that it melted. Wow. And that's why it broke lower than expected. <laughs> the the loops yeah. didn't have time, time to equalize. So they were sliding over but, I mean, each other. Some loads in sailing are like going to be like boom. But we'll often pre-load them and let them mm. sit for you know at thirty percent of breaking strength for a while. For a while, and they'll settle in. And they settle in. Oh, wow! All right, math is interesting. So the soft shackle that we did was what 21, 22 kilonewtons, yeah. and that's technically four strands. This is six strands breaking at thirty-four. So technically. The splices should have retained more strength than that. We should have been getting I, 60. Well, let's pull this apart. I think the splice is still good, and the Dyneema got so hot in the pull that the Dyneema melted. Another consideration is the bend radius, but that's not a terrible bend radius. You can see how much it was bending there. So this is... Oh, wow. Oh, there we go. This was taped there. Yeah. Okay. So if we pull that tape off. Can you even tape? Wow. It's not millionaire tape for nothing. Can we pull the rest of this off? I want to see what the load bearing, the blue Dyneema looks like in there. I don't know if we're going to get to it. What the heck is... So the three strands of Dyneema yeah. are there, and then there's a little bit of tape left over. Get rid of that tape. So there's... That's not where the splice is. Okay. They just got hot and melted off. I think that's where it was touching the soft shackle. Yeah. It's where it went over the bend. And that... Is where the splice was. Yeah, there's the, your splice. It's not the splice. The splice didn't pull out or break. It was where it bent at the soft shackle. Instead of breaking gear fear at How Not To, I think we're creating gear fear. <laughs> 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 I, it's still pretty strong in my opinion, but I don't know. Strong enough. Yeah, so it's not how many wraps you go around, it's how you're bent over stuff. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better joke. But we got a whole playlist for sailing stuff that we're starting now. And we're gonna kind of incorporate this into the soft shackle playlist. And of course, not gonna ask you to subscribe because that's annoying. Thanks for watching. Cheers. David mailed me another loop because he had a theory that if you pull slowly and not so quickly, basically, it would settle and all the strands would be working evenly and it would be stronger than what we got on the one and only test we did. So he made us another one and shipped it to me. And so, I just got done breaking it. Uh, we basically pulled it and it would settle. So I'd push the button, get it up to about six kilonewtons and then it would just settle. And a lot of that could just be my hydraulic or the other soft shackles, but I also think it's this settling. And then I'm all excited and I go for the gusto and try to brake test it. And I only can go up to 49 kilonewtons before my piston runs out of stroke and, uh, or strength I should say. And so I had to set up my two to one. And uh, so, so far we're like way above our first test. Then I pull it with my two to one and it got 41 kilonewtons because I rearranged how it was orientated. I didn't massage it several times in that spot. And I pulled it at a two to one speed, half the speed as I've been pulling things. And I got 41 before something broke. Wasn't quite sure what broke because it was still intact. Then I pulled it again. And I got 36 kilonewtons to get a full destruction of this sling, which is crazy. Because one of the three strands in here broke at 41, and then it took 36 for it to finish coming undone. Just crazy. That's, that's really high force for, uh, for what this is. Uh, and it's kind of crazy how much of a variable we're getting depending how we use it. Now, if it's on a boat, 
like it's going to be loaded in a low enough force often enough that it should settle to get maximum strength. I also tested soft shackles for a different video for our Highline segments. And by pulling slowly and massaging it and like cyclically, slowly, cyclically loading it, I ended up getting 49, 48 kilonewtons on a soft shackle that I otherwise was getting 34 kilonewtons on. It's interesting. That am steel likes being mm, cyclically loaded. But now if we girth hitch this or if you attach it any other way than just on two big shackles straight like we did in the slack that machine, you're going to probably get half. So make sure you tell us in the comments what you want to see next, what you think of this, and check out our other sailing videos in our sailing playlist and the other videos we got on this channel. Cheers.